life gets busy and therefore I can't believe it's taken me frankly this long to actually do this. Oh, hi, buddy. Hi. How you doing? Fine. <laughs> I'm just uh, going to stretch out here. She's back. <laughs> we did it. Anna, I haven't even told him yet. Some races are happening. Ooh. I'll tell you later. Come on. Some races are happening. Okay. You guys go to the back. Come on, Mama. He's all right. Okay. I love you, babe. Great job. Was it good? Yes, it was good. Nice. Okay. My, oh my, what a day. So we're talking about oh, efficiency as a runner, uh, becoming more efficient in our daily uh, endeavor to get out the door and run and do it in a way that uh, is not stressful. And I'll talk more about this in a minute. And yes, I did already get my run in today, 10 miles, about 720 a mile. There it is on your screen in the Ultra Torin 4.5 plush. I'm not going to give you my first impression today, but I will say I'm very, very excited about this shoe. Uh, very comfortable. You know what's the most comfortable thus far? The inner liner. The way it worked with my socks today, just, it was, I, ca I can't even describe how comfortable the inside of this shoe was. I'll talk about the ride of the shoe as well very, very soon. It's a new upper. Uh, updated upper, which has reduced the weight of the shoe quite a bit from last year's iteration. Ultra Torin 4.5 plush. Yep. Watch out. In black. In black. All right. Ugh. And we're off. <laughs> so our, our printer at our house works when it wants to. So a lot of times I just end up getting what I need printed off at Office Depot. So that's where we're going. There it is, come on now. All right, let's go break this down into shooting. Chasing it down, everyone. We're finally chasing it down today. Efficiency for runners, okay? And what I'm about to share, I know it's probably not gonna be earth shattering information, but I bet there's some runners out there that are busy, right? I know you're busy. Commuting to and from work, picking up the kids from, you know, soccer practice or from band practice, whatever the case may be, or making dinner every night. Oh man, it's like life gets busy. And therefore, I can't believe it's taken me, frankly, this long to actually do this. And that's why I decided, you know what? Let's just make a vlog about how I am going to continue to strive to be more efficient as a runner. Why? A couple different reasons. Number one is that mental energy that we uh, burn and expend when we have to think about, okay, what running gear do I need for the next day's run? And listen, I'm always saying on this channel, you really don't need that much running gear. Like the, it's, it, that's what I love about the sport. Like it's a very simple sport when you compare it to hockey, to cycling, to lacrosse, to rock climbing. Like at the end of the day, we need running shoes, maybe running socks. Technically, you don't even need a running watch. You can just go out your door and start running. But there are a few things that do help 
in different situations, whether it's weather conditions change, uh, whether it's running on the trails or the roads, etc., etc. So finally, I decided, all right, here we go, the running checklist, and um, let me just pull it out here. And I know this is, again, as I said, this is not earth shattering. I'm sure many of you already do this, but I decided finally, um, so I printed this off on nicer paper, at some point, not today, at some point, I'm gonna laminate this because I already forgot one thing, headlamps. That's important for night running, especially in the winter time when it gets dark earlier. But this is going to be my running gear checklist and I'm gonna hang it right next to my dressers in my room. And listen, our room, like you know, we don't have a ton of room in there. Um, I have one dresser that is dedicated just to running gear. Um, so this is gonna hang right next to that. And at the top, we've got actual running gear. On the second page, I have vlog gear. So yes, making the vlog every day. I've got a couple things here like the vest, my raid light vest that carries the drone. I've got the GoPros listed, lavalier mics, batteries, memory cards, tripod, etc., etc. Um, so that's a little addition on my list. And I bet if you end up thinking about, hmm, what would end up on my running gear checklist? And you know what? I was going to wait till later, but let's do it right now. Question of the day. How do you strive to be efficient in your running? Most, and what I'm really trying to get uh, focus on is how do you get out your door efficiently? What do you do? And we're gonna go inside in a second. And I'm gonna share a few more tips on what I do the night before I go run, especially a big run like tomorrow, the FKT I'm going for. Actually, when you're watching this today, yes, we're going for the Longs Peak FKT. Um, so for those bigger days, how do you get out the door as efficiently as possible. Okay, so I'm gonna share a few more tips inside. Uh, but, so I've broken this down into three sections, running gear at the top, my vlog gear in the middle, and then after the workout at the bottom, okay? So for example, I'm a big fan of coolers, especially in hot weather, but in the winter as well, for those big long runs up in the mountains. What I do is like, for example, I put Nalgene's the night before in the freezer, let them freeze, and then I put the Nalgene's in the cooler as I'm heading out the door to keep all of my drinks. And I love cold drinks when you get done. Like uh, a couple days ago at Pikes Peak, there's the cooler. It's just filled with electrolyte drinks, uh, my recovery mix drinks. For these big mountain runs, my alarm goes off at 4 a.m. And my goal for me, okay, I always, of course, set the coffee the night before. My goal is to be out the door uh, 40 minutes after my alarm goes off. Why? I honestly just love sitting in a dark, quiet house, sipping coffee, eating my bobo, and then if, I'm, if I did my packing well the night before, then I can get out the door usually by like 4.40 or 4.45, and then it's about an hour to an hour and a half drive depending on where I'm going up in the mountains, so I'm arriving at the trailhead usually right around 6 a.m., which is a pretty good time to start these big mountain running adventures. Does that make sense? All right, let's go inside. I'll give you a few more tips and tricks and butter my bread. Oh, let's go hang this up as well. Come on. Okay, very good. Feeling good about everything here. So uh, just a couple more quick ideas and tips for being efficient is I hung up the checklist next to my dressers, all right? So then it was really nice. Like I didn't have to expend that mental energy. Okay, what do I need? What do I need? What am I forgetting? I just looked at the list and went down uh, point by point, number by number. So then taking it with my next step, and I usually do this once the kids are asleep uh, because this is our kitchen table and we're gonna eat dinner here tonight. Uh, but I'll do this, uh, like let's say at 8 p.m. and I'll just lay everything out to double check and go back to the checklist just to make sure. So, and how I lay it out on the table, kind of like just before a race, a big race, is start at the head with the hats and um, sweatbands and buffs, and then just work your way down. You know, your singlet, your t-shirts, your long sleeve in the middle of the table, watch, okay? And then your flip belt, your, your shorts, your uh, uh, socks, 
and then I do my best to resist not putting my running shoes on the kitchen table. Don't tell true love. Don't tell true love. So that's uh, the next tip. And again, and then what I do, okay, so if I go to bed at, let's say, you know, 9 p.m. or 9.30 or 10 p.m., everyone else is asleep. And so when I wake up at 4 a.m., it's all here and it's just very easy to uh, get dressed and get out the door a lot more efficiently. All right, so I'll just leave this here. I have to take it down right now because again, we're gonna eat dinner here in about an hour or so. Does that make sense? Oh yeah, one other tip I just thought of is that with the cooler, um, I do put all the Nalgene's in the freezer, sorry, two Nalgene's in the freezer so they freeze, but I also really strive to mix all my drinks the night before and then put them in the refrigerator so they stay nice and cold and then just put them right in the cooler the next morning. Um, and lastly is if it's a big race or an FKT effort, that's like a really big deal. I actually like to take a shower in the morning before the race to help me wake up. It's amazing, like a hot shower, hot coffee. It just like gets me going, like a hot shower really can wake me up well. Um, so I will lay out everything, like all of my race gear that I'm gonna be wearing in the race um, right in the bathroom. So just again, just like one less step that you have to think about the morning of a big effort. So I guess actually I'm gonna take this stuff right now and go put it in the bathroom just so it's, uh, there for the morning. All right, everyone. I know that was a little bit of a, a different vlog, a lot of talking, but I just wanted to talk through my process for how I'm striving to be as efficient as, a, as possible as a runner. Why? So we have more time, what? To stretch, to foam roll, maybe to do a little more running, maybe to go for a swim, whatever the, like the more minutes we have, the better. And yes, minutes add up to hours, hours add up to days, over years and years of running. So that's what the checklist is all about and a couple of tips here. And of course, get your coffee ready the night before. You gotta get your coffee ready the night before, so I'm actually gonna do that right now. Onward and upward, thanks for being here, thanks for watching, and what we're gonna do, we're gonna toss it back to uh, a running gear vlog from about two or three months ago, uh, where I talk about some of my running gear in 2020. Running gear 2020 right there, right there. Onward and upward. Thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. Seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. See you tomorrow.